Okay, so as we're looking at this quiz, the first graph you're looking at is a position time graph. So on a position time graph, where do you find velocity? Slope. So the, the slope of that line gives you velocity. And the first question is, where is the velocity zero? Is there a segment for which the velocity is zero? How many of you would say that velocity is zero between A and B? B and C? C and D. E and F. Wait, I'm sorry, D and E. E and F. F and G. G and H. H and I. Yes. So the only section where, and it's, and it's not perfect because I'm working with Google drawing tools now because I'm, anyway, I don't have paint anymore. Um, so this is not perfect, but that's, that's about as close to a 0% slope line as I can get on this. Um, all the rest of these have a non-zero slope, which means that there is a velocity. As long as you have a non-zero slope on a position time graph, you have velocity. Now, you know, an argument can be made that at a moment just past B, you have a zero slope for a second as something goes up and stops and comes back down. You have a moment of zero slope, so you have a moment of, velo of zero velocity. Um, okay, now identify any segment or point where the velocity is constant or nearly so. So let's go back to this. Okay. Any points where the velocity is constant? So since slope is velocity, what are we looking for to show constant velocity? Yeah, a relatively straight line, a section where the slope is relatively constant. A to B, remember it said or nearly so. That's my fudge because I'm working with a drawing tool I'm not used to yet. Um, B to C, no, definitely not. Um, C to D, yeah, about as close as you're going to get with this drawing tool. That, that was, I, I keyed that as a correct answer. Um, D to E, oh, that little red dot should move over like an, a smidge, two pixels. Um, I think I said D to E and E to F, maybe not D to E. Certainly E to F is about, again, about as constant as we're going to get on this. Um, F to G. Uh, again, is it is it a flaw of the drawing or is it actually intended. What about um, G to H? No, nobody's going to fall for that. H to I. Yeah, that's got a constant velocity. Now it's a zero velocity, or near it, nearly, but it's, it's constant. Okay, now let's look at the other graph, which is a velocity time graph. A little bit different. So on a velocity time graph, <laughs> Zoom out here. Identify any point or segment where the velocity is zero. So on a velocity time graph now, all of a sudden, whoa, on a velocity time graph all of a sudden, velocity is actually the y-axis. So at A, is the velocity zero? No. no. B? No. C? No. D? Yes. yes. So D, and really the way this is drawn, D, D through E, E, those are all zero velocity. Um, F, G, H, I, yes. So you've got a few points, and it, it gets confusing. You have to make sure you know what graph you're looking at because different quantities are given by slope and by actual coordinates. So now we're going to use the same graph, but we're going to identify a point where acceleration is zero. So how do we get acceleration off of a velocity time graph? Slope. So now we're looking at slope for velocity time. And again, my, my fudge was zero or nearly so.
So this is not perfectly drawn. I need to get better with Google Draw. Um, a to B? Yeah. B to C? Yeah. C to D? No. D to E? Yes. Um, e to F? No. G to H? No. G to A, or I'm sorry, F to G, no. G to H, yeah, you know, fudging it because of the bad drawing. Now let me ask you this. This was not on the quiz. Where is the acceleration positive? Write it down. Where is the acceleration positive? That's what we're going to talk about. That's exactly, yeah. And that, that's why I asked that question. So the slope of the line from F to G is a positive slope. Now, where is this object speeding up? So we said that from F to G, we have a positive slope. Where is this object speeding up? Okay, Trent, you want to try it? But, good try. Noble attempt. So you said C to D, and what else? E to F, and... Okay, so you're, you're saying basically it's speeding up every place that it's not constant. Okay, no. You want to try it? So you're saying E to F and F to G, it's speeding up. Okay. No. Sarah, you want to take a shot? You think E to F, it's speeding up. Good. Okay, Tarek, you want to try it? E to F at the split second between where time is zero and G. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because remember... It's speeding up when the velocity is traveling away from zero. When the velocity, when the magnitude of the velocity is getting larger. So, you know, at point F, velocity is zero. That color doesn't show up very well, does it? At point F, velocity is zero. I'm sorry, that's point E. Jeez, Louise Moser. There. At point E, velocity is zero. At point F, it is a magnitude greater than zero. Remember, magnitude is like absolute value. So it doesn't matter that it's in a negative velocity. You know, if this is negative 10 meters per second, it's, it's a larger magnitude than zero. So from E to F, that object is speeding up. Now, from F, let me get these out of here. From, oh, okay. So from E to F, we agree that this thing is speeding up. From F to, and, and Tarek nicely points out this little moment here that I didn't name, where the velocity crosses the zero line. So this object is doing what from F to this unnamed point? It's slowing down. It's, the magnitude of its velocity is decreasing. It's, going, it's approaching zero. Now, from that unnamed point up to G, what's happening? It's speeding up. Through that entire period, from F to G, the acceleration is what? Positive or negative? P 
positive. But during part of that time, it's slowing down, and during part of that time, it's speeding up. Does that hurt your head? Usually it does a little bit. Usually that's one that, that kind of makes people go, I don't like it. But it's, you know, be aware that positive acceleration doesn't always mean speeding up. Negative acceleration doesn't always mean slowing down. It depends on the magnitude of the velocity. Now, in general, in general terms, and if you're, um, you know, as long as we are dealing with, I'll go to a blank here, as long as we're dealing with velocity that's all in the positive quadrant, you know, where everything is positive, then yeah, positive acceleration means you're speeding up and negative means you're slowing down. It's when we move out of that, when we start to have negative velocities, you can't have negative time. When you have negative velocity, that's where acceleration gets tricky. So I just want you to be real aware of that. Okay, good? Um, I, I think the scores on the quiz were more reflective of the quality of the drawing than of your understanding. I'll, I'll work to get better at Google Draw. Um, as velocity increases, the chunk of space that you can travel in each chunk of time gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And you saw this with your marble. So with your cars in that lab, what you should have seen was that the, the intervals that it traveled in a second were pretty consistent. Um, you know, given some fudge room for, you know, timer reflexes and, you know, hand-eye coordination and all that, those, those chunks of space should have been pretty uniform. With the marble, what you probably saw, what you should have seen, is that those chunks got bigger and bigger and bigger as it rolled down the track. Um, that's because the spacing changes as the velocity changes. Now everything that we're going to do with acceleration assumes one thing. It assumes that the acceleration is constant. If we don't assume constant acceleration, we can't do any of this. Do we ever have truly constant acceleration in the world? We do, in a few cases. Um, not very often on the x-axis. So if you hit the gas coming off a stop sign, is your acceleration constant? No. You know, you, you have the, the human frailty and fallibility and, you know, your foot, you're not a robot pressing the accelerator. And even if you were, the engine and the vehicle in which you are, which you are operating um, isn't perfect either. You know, there, there are hiccups. So we pretend that acceleration is absolutely constant. It's not. What we're going to start to do is we're going to take the two basic equations that you've gotten and we are going to do beastly beautiful algebra. We're going to rearrange those into what I, I usually call the four golden equations. Um, you might remember that they were written on the wall in my old room on mar in marker. I don't think we're allowed to do that here, but we'll have to put up a poster. <laughs> they are the four equations that we will use for all the kinematic stuff that we're going to do in the next couple chapters. And we're going to derive them all here. A word about deriving equations. Um, it builds your algebra. It strengthens your algebra. Algebra is like any other muscle. Um, you use it, it gets stronger. You let it atrophy and it turns to blubber. The other thing is this, and this is feedback I've gotten from, from past students who went on to take college physics. Um, I think I told you guys, my experience in college physics was pretty abysmal. I barely survived. Um, it was, you know, fingernails the whole way, and I didn't have high school physics. I did not have high school physics. And in the college physics courses, and this was feedback I got from, from students afterwards, I said, yeah, that's right. They just hand you the equations. You never know why, where it came from or how it was derived. And for a lot of people, and me included, and some of the former students who've come back and, and given me feedback, 
if you don't know where it's coming from, it's much harder to understand when to use it. You know, if you don't know how you got that tool, it's just a tool sitting in the drawer and you don't know why you would use it. Once you've actually constructed that tool yourself, it's much easier to understand when and why it gets used. So we're going to start that process. That's so exciting. Okay. So the two equations that we have so far, we have average acceleration is equal to the change in position over the change in time. Well, here's another thing that's true. As long as that velocity is an average, it's a true average, how do you get a mathematical average? If I give you two test grades and I say, what's your average test grade in this class? Add them together, divide by two. Well, if we're taking an average velocity, we can actually say this. The final velocity plus the initial velocity, or vice versa, divided by two. So what that gives us then is that VI, well, yeah, we'll do it this way, VI plus VF divided by two because that is equal to that. We're doing a substitution. It's just the first of our substitutions. So we've taken this expression for average velocity. We've taken this expression for average velocity. And we've set these two equal to one another. So we have this. If we then solve that for displacement, what we get oops, what we get is delta x equals one half vi plus vf times delta t. Okay. And that's, that's the first one that we're going to start to use. And if you look at page 53, we'll do a practice problem together, and then I'll add some assigned problems. So that is the first one that we will start to use of what we call the four gold rules. Okay, so on page 53, this is sample 2C. And what we're told is that you have a racing car. It is reaching a it reaches a speed of 42 meters per second and then begins uniform negative acceleration using its parachute and braking system. It comes to rest 5.5 seconds later. How far did it move? So two first steps when we're solving any kind of problem like this. One, draw yourself a picture. So there's my race car. It's not fancy. It's not, even, it's not particularly realistic, but it'll do. We have some distance. We have a velocity at one point in that distance, and we have a, a velocity at another point in that distance. We have, we're told we have uniform negative acceleration, um, even they're not very careful about that, but we know it's slowing down, it's coming to a stop. What we want to know, so this displacement, this delta x, is what we're looking for. And we have a time interval in which this occurs. 5.5 5 seconds. So the next thing, now right now you only really have one equation. Okay. You've, you, well, you've got your two basics. Um, average velocity equals delta x over delta t. Average acceleration equals delta v over delta t. And we have this new one we just made. But pretty soon you're going to have six to pick from. 
So the first thing to do is list your variables. So I'm going to list my vi, my vf, my delta x, my delta t. What's my vi? What is it? No. We're going the other direction. So we're coming to a stop. Zero is our final velocity. So final velocity is zero meters per second. What's our initial? It was the 42 that was given in the problem. So it's 42, and they just say 42 meters per second, so we only have two sig figs to work with. So we have our initial, we have our final. Delta X is what we want, and what's our delta T? It's 5.5 seconds. So then we want to rearrange the, the well, we want to write the equation in its basic form. So we have delta X equals one half VI plus VF times delta T. We don't even have to rearrange this. There's no, re no algebra necessary at this point. So this is just plug and play. Delta x equals 1 half 42 meters per second plus 0 meters per second times 5.5 seconds. Let's do some quick dimensional analysis. So if we add meters per second and meters per second, what are the units? Meters per second. We multiply meters per second by seconds, what are the units? Me no, we multiply meters per second times seconds, we get meters. That's, that's the common good. That's the trap. Don't. So now that you've stepped in it, you know how not to. Okay, so we know our units are meters. That's, that's good. That's what we want. We're looking at a displacement. So now, give me a number. Okay, so we're getting a raw number of 115.5. Now, how many sig figs do we have to work with? Two. So our delta x, we can only go to this place, and we have a 5 after it. 120, yeah. So we're saying that it's going to take them about 120 meters to stop. These are the kind of um, stopping distance and stopping time problems are pretty common, sort of like a traffic problem. You know, at this velocity, how many seconds does it take you to stop in this distance? Or, you know, if you've got this many seconds to stop, how, how far is your vehicle going to travel? Okay, assigned on page 53, so this is the practice 2C, numbers 1 through 5, and I'll put that on the board. So we'll do one more type, then I'll give you time to work on problems. Okay. So what if we don't know the final velocity? You know, in the case of the race car, we know that it came to a stop. And that's very often how the problems are worded, either came to a stop or beginning from rest. So those are your clues that one end, the velocity is zero. If we don't know VF, and this took all my, for, all my subscripted formats and kicked them out, so you'll just have to bear with me. Um, as, here's the thing we do know. Acceleration is equal to delta V over delta T. Well, delta V is just equal to VF minus VI. Delta T is just equal to TF minus TI. We seldom use those. We can do some substitution. We can say that we'll put this in for that. And we can find VF if we need to. So we do average acceleration is equal to VF minus VI divided by delta T. We can rearrange this to solve.
for final velocity. So this is what we want to solve for. A delta T is equal to VF minus VI. And then, let me shrink that. So A delta T plus VI equals VF. Okay. And this is most commonly actually written as VF equals VI plus A delta T. To me, it makes more sense intuitively written that way. They're the same thing. Because what you're saying is, oh, the, the final velocity that you achieve is equal to how fast you were going to start with plus your acceleration times the amount of time you had to accelerate. So it's, it's really intuitive once you see it that way. So now we have this, but what if we still want displacement? Oh, okay. Well, that's a little bit of a problem, isn't it? Let's copy this. I stopped recording. Okay, we did some combining of terms there. We distributed our t. Not sure when I hit pause. Um, so we're now down to delta x equals one half v i delta t, or one half <laughs> times quantity two v i delta t plus a delta t squared. Let's shrink this, and now we're going to do this. Delta x equals. Well, we can distribute that one half. So. 1 half times 2 means that goes away. So delta x equals vi delta t plus, we have to keep the 1 half there, 1 half a delta t squared. That allows us to get displacement without knowing the final velocity. So as long as we have the acceleration, the time, the initial velocity, we can get displacement. Okay, so let's practice a couple pro one problem together like that, and then I'll assign those and give you some time to work. So this is um, sample 2D on page 55. A plane starting at rest, what's its initial velocity? Zero. A plane starting at rest at one end, of, one end of a runway undergoes uniform acceleration of 4.8 meters per second squared for 15 seconds before takeoff. At what, what is its speed at takeoff? Ooh, and how long does the runway have to be? Ooh, yeah. Do we go off the end of the runway or do we get that bird in the air? So... First thing, draw yourself a little picture. It doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to somehow convey the situation. So we have some VI, we have some VF, we have a delta X. We'll take four minutes, stretch your legs, etc. We'll be back. Okay, better start recording. So we're going to list all the variables. We've got VI, we have an acceleration of 4.8 meters per second squared. We have a delta T of 15 seconds. We don't know VF, we don't know delta X. What you're going to start to do through this process, now right now it's really easy because they're laying out problems that are all using the same equations that we've just derived. Um, you're going to have to start to look at what do I have, okay so I have VI, I have A, I have delta T, and what do I want and look at which equation ties those four things together. And that's the whole process for chapter two, is what do I have, which of the equations that I have ties those four things together, and doesn't ignore any of them. Because if you have one of those variables and you ignore it, the answer you get is not correct, because you're ignoring some physical fact. You okay? The one that we have so far that ties those all together, those four, is VF equals VI plus A 
delta t. Your final velocity is equal to how fast you were going to start with plus how many seconds you had to accelerate at what rate. <coughs> very, very simple, no rearrangement needed. It's a zero, so vi actually goes away. When initial velocity is zero in something like that, it just disappears. Plus 4.8 meters per second squared times 15 seconds. Let's do a quick check of dimensional analysis. So obviously our VI went away. Meters per second is gone. Um, meters per second squared times seconds gives us meters per second, which is what we want. We want a velocity. So give, get a... Yes, sir. Yep, 72 meters per second. Now, how many sig figs do we have to work with? Two. And our raw answer is actually two sig figs. This seldom happens, but... Okay, so we've, we've got a raw answer. We can keep that as our sig fig answer. We have a final velocity. Yeehaw! There's just one thing we have left to find out. How long does this runway have to be? Now, here's the thing. It is tempting, well, you don't have a whole lot of equations yet. It is tempting to look back to something that involves your VF that you just calculated. I'm going to warn you now, and I'm going to warn you about 643 times between now and when we leave all the kinematic stuff. Don't do it unless you have no other choice. Go back to your givens. Reason being, if you screw up one calculation, then it means you screw up another. So, you know, you can, you can create a, a sort of a chain of events based on one, you know, it can be calculator error. My, num my finger slips on the buttons. You know, you, you do something dumb. You transpose a number. If you, don't, if you don't have any other choice, that's the only time that you would do that. So let's get rid of this. And we're essentially going to go back to the drawing board. And now we're going to say, well, I have VIA delta T. And I would like delta X. Do I have an equation that ties those four things together? Yes, and it's the one that we just derived. So delta x equals vi delta t plus one-half a delta t squared. And we have all those things, and we aren't relying on our final velocity that we just calculated. So vi is zero. What happens to this entire piece? goes poof, up in smoke, it's gone. So delta x equals one-half a delta t squared. Delta x equals one-half 4.8 meters per second squared times 15 seconds squared. Let's do a quick dimensional analysis check. So we have one-half of meters per second squared times, what are the units that we end up with here? Seconds squared. So what units do we end up in? Meters, which is what we want. That's good. All right, give me a raw number. What you got? 540, is it even? Yes. Okay. 540 meters. And how many sig figs do we have to work with? Two, so we don't even have to touch it. And that is our final answer. We need a 540 meter runway. That's a pretty darn long runway. That's a very long runway. Um, this is not one of the problems where it asks questions like, needs to achieve this final velocity to get off the ground. The runway is this long, and you can, you can accelerate at this rate. Can you get this plane in the air? because that's the kind of question I like to ask, you know. Compare these factors to what needs to happen. Okay, on page 55, um, I am assigning numbers 1 
3 and 4. This is practice 2D. So right now I'm going to give you time to work on those, but not before we do one, one thing. Your note card. You're going to now put on two additional equations. These are, these are part of your four goldens that we're building. So you, you should now have these four equations on your note card. We're going to build two more golden equations. Um, these are the ones, my, my dream mural for the old room, and nobody could quite carry it out, was sort of what looked like some sort of or biblical golden scroll emanating light that had these four equations painted on it like made of golden parchment and yeah well that didn't pan out but they wrote it in sharpie marker on the wall so you know that was as good as we could do yep so um, get those on your note card and we'll build the last two 